scanning for audio. Welcome to another Tin Dog Podcast. This time I'll be talking about the history of the universe in 100 objects. Written by Steve Tribe and James Goss. Published by BBC Books. Now it's supposed to be 20 quid, but I'm sure you can track it down much cheaper. For example, Asda's currently got it in for a tenner, while Tesco's have got it in for £12. Either way, they're bargains, considering what you get. Now before I discuss it, I just want to thank everyone who's recently voted for me in the European Podcasting Awards. Remember, there's still time to vote. Voting doesn't end until the end of 2012. Simply visit the Tin Dog website and click on the link on the right-hand side that says Vote for Me. You don't have to register, you don't have to do anything. Just click on the link, follow the instructions, and vote. Right, enough of that. Let's talk about 100 objects. The BBC, i.e. Radio 4, have had the 100 objects that influenced world history programme running for a while. The back of Doctor Who magazine has something similar running, but here we've got something of a gem, something that's had a lot of work put into it. The brilliant thing about this book is it covers the old and new series, which, let's face it, is what we want as fans. Now, I will put my hand up and say that stuff from the original classic series is sometimes showing its age, looking clunky, not as elegant or as swish as modern Doctor Who. After 50 years, who of us could ever say we looked the same as we did then? No. So what they've done is, every single object has a painting. For example, the section on K9 has a cutaway painting of him, with all of the mechanics that are allegedly inside of him, looking simply marvellous. There is not a better image in existence of K9 than this. Every single thing in this book has a painting, and the paintings are of such exquisitely high quality that you just, well, you're in awe of them. The glass Dalek and a lot of other really iconic objects throughout the history of Doctor Who and, of course, the history of the universe all exist here. And it gives you a wonderful vision into the universe-spanning way that Doctor Who sees everything. And, like the TV series, it doesn't take itself completely seriously. For example, one of the objects discussed is a carrot, the first carrot grown on Mars, which allows you to talk about colonisation and a host of other things. The obvious candidates like fob watches and sonic screwdrivers and, of course, TARDISes are all here. But things like Milo Clancy's toaster give you a lovely insight into everything. To be honest, if you've enjoyed the utterly brilliant Doctor Who books or the Doctor Who encyclopaedia, this is just better. It's funny, and it's easy to dip into. So if you're looking for a book this Christmas, I'd put this on the list right now and get your colleagues or your family to nip out and buy it for you right now. The first object in 100 Objects is Tegan Javanka's lipstick, because that was there at Event 1. Event 1 being the beginning of the universe, the hydrogen inrush, because that's the beginning of the story of the universe, and that's the beginning of the story. But of course, being a Doctor Who book, it has to look at the other versions of the creation of the universe, i.e. Big Bang 2 and the like, all of which are well worth looking at. It doesn't take itself too seriously, but it takes itself just seriously enough to be a crackingly good read. The authors of this, James Goss and Steve Tribe, are all Doctor Who alumni. You may not recognise the names straight off, but James Goss has written three Torchwood novels, a Doctor Who novel, two radio plays, and a Being Human book. His Doctor Who audiobook... Dead Air won Best Audiobook of 2010. James also spent several years working on the BBC's official Doctor Who website, co-wrote the website for Torchwood Series 1, and he's been nominated for British Science Fantasy Awards. Steve Tribe is the author of the Doctor Who book The Time Traveller's Almanac. That would be The Time Traveller's Almanac, not Whostrology, The Time Traveller's Almanac. That's a completely separate book, which of course you can still buy in pre-order. Let's face it, you've only got a couple of weeks left before it comes out. Sorry, did I just slip in a random plug? I apologise for that. He has edited over a hundred Doctor Who and Torchwood books and co-wrote the Dalek Handbook. So these people have a definite pedigree. 
If you're passing one of these shops, pop in, have a look, have a browse. You'll end up taking it home with you. It's a simply brilliant book. Except there isn't a Doctor Who brilliant book this year. So this is it. Buy this one. Yes, you know you want to. Right, I'm off now. Probably to watch Red Dwarf. And I'll come back and review that very soon. Be seeing you. You've been listening to the Tin Dog Podcast. Doctor Who and its associated shows are copyright of the BBC. No infringement is intended. To contact the show, email tin-dog at hotmail.co.uk. To order, or simply find out more about the book, Hoostrology, the Time Traveller's Almanac, visit hoostrology.com. The Tin Dog Podcast is a founder member of the Doctor Who Podcast Alliance. <laughs>